we should shut down the cryptocurrencies, right? Right? What's going on, everybody? It's your boy, Crypto Bobby. I hope you are having a great day, great night, wherever you're watching or listening in from. And there is a lot of exciting, interesting things to talk about today when it comes to the crypto landscape, things that happened over the weekend. And as of the time of recording this on Monday, we have Fidelity only a few weeks away from launching their crypto trading platform, which could potentially be a really, really big deal and is somewhat flying a little bit under the radar right now. You also have a ton going on with Bitfinex and Tether from Bitfinex literally being in court this second as of recording this right now in New York City uh, to launching their new IEO token, which is also Leo. So talking about that and then also Ether having a really big day a lot of you might have seen ETH running. Why is it running? Well, some positive comments or potentially positive comments from the CFTC in regards to Ether futures has also just come out. So a lot to dive into, a lot to unpack, but probably your favorite topic here is going to be rich old dudes complaining about Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies. And we'll talk a little bit about why I think that they do as well as what you should think about it. Does, does it mean anything to you? Does it not? But if you love rich old dudes complaining about Bitcoin, complaining about cryptocurrency, providing you great names like Rat Poison, make sure to hit that thumbs up button, hit that like button. Helps to get this video out to as many people as possible. And the more of you that press the like button, the less Rat Poison there is in the world, I think. I don't know. We'll go with that. So with Bitcoin, where it is so far in 2019, there is some positive momentum behind Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies as a whole. And you're starting to see more media coverage, more mainstream media coverage again, CNBC, Bloomberg, people not afraid to talk about cryptocurrency. And that is also bringing out the uh, negative coverage of, of crypto as well, because that is something that does get a lot of pickup and a lot of discussion. Now, if we look to a few different articles that have come out recently, a few different points of coverage, one of the big things that people like to do is A, ask Warren Buffett and Charlie Munger what they think about Bitcoin, and then B, ask a number of prominent economists what their thoughts of Bitcoin are. So I want to talk a little bit at a high level about this as well, because it is a trend that kind of continues to happen and continues to happen. And when Bitcoin is going up, people will kind of bash it and slam it. And then when Bitcoin is going down, it's a bunch of I told you so's from these people. And then when Bitcoin is staying stagnant, there's no conversation because nobody cares about it. But most recently, this came out from CNBC. Shout out CNBC, your most trusted coverage for, you know, your most trusted source for cryptocurrency news coverage. But this is Joseph Stiglitz, who is a Nobel Prize winning economist, also goes by the name of Joey Stiggs at the Jersey Shore, spins a little bit. He actually does not. But Joseph Stiglitz said this when talking about cryptocurrencies. He says, cryptocurrencies should be su shut down worries that they enable illicit activity by making money transactions less transparent, then goes on to say that he does see value in digital payment systems and supports electronic use of government-backed currencies like the dollar. So there's two different points of this that I think are uh, bad and equally ridiculous. Uh, first of all, the fact that shutting down these cryptocurrencies is a lot easier said than done. For for some of these smaller cryptocurrencies, you can't just like press a button and, or for some of the smaller cryptocurrencies, you basically can shut them down through pressure and because no one's really adopting them, at least for some of these blockchains. But for something like Bitcoin, for something like Ethereum, for something like you know some of these top 10, maybe 20 cryptocurrencies that have a large pool of miners and people that are dedicated to them just because somebody says they want to shut it down it is going to be interesting whether or not that can actually be done. And I don't think it can for at least some of the larger cryptocurrencies out there. So the fact of just saying, hey, you know, we should shut these cryptocurrencies down like there is a CEO of Bitcoin that you can just reach out to and be like, hey, sir, you're violating the law. You need to shut this down. It's kind of the whole point of a, you know, decentralized payment system, right? Right. Although in the case of Craig Wright, obviously you can just send it to the CEO of Bitcoin, the creator founder Satoshi Nakamoto. Wink, wink. But on the opposite end of the coin here, you have this discussion, and it is really interesting and really scary, scary, at least in my opinion, because you have this subject of surveillance capitalism, as well as the digitization of just money in general, really leading to heavy government surveillance, heavy surveillance from companies, just everything you do being tracked. And 
Bitcoin is even like that now with all the blockchain analysis companies like Chainalysis and uh, you know all the ones that basically every large cryptocurrency exchange is, is using now. So going on to say, you know what? I don't like cryptocurrencies. I don't like Bitcoin essentially because illicit activity, but also just privacy. That is a massive component. Yes, there is some illicit activity, but also it does provide an element of privacy, financial privacy for people. But going to say, you know what? We can have a better regulated economy knowing what people are spending. What if you don't want everybody to know every single thing about everything you do? I personally... I don't need that. I don't need that in my life. Not that I'm doing anything nefarious, but I don't want every corporation and the government to know every single thing I'm spending my money on. And that is what certain people like Joseph Stiglitz, I think are pushing and not a fan of it. Now on the other end of the spectrum too, you have Warren Buffett here who has repeatedly come out and said that he does not like Bitcoin, does not see value in Bitcoin and continues to say that. And I do have sympathy for Warren Buffett in this case because he is at his annual meeting for Berkshire Hathaway in Omaha, Nebraska. I believe last year they asked him about it. Uh, I believe in 2017, they probably asked him about it as well. And every single time Warren Buffett just doesn't like Bitcoin. And people continue to ask him about it as if there's going to be a new answer there and there just has not been. And I don't think there ever will be. You know, Dude's over 80 years old. He's not gonna change his mind, most likely. And he has gone out and said it's a gambling device. There's a lot of frauds connected with it, yada, yada, yada. Well, in my mind, this is kind of two different things. Number one, negative press about Bitcoin gets clicks. This is something that happens every year. Journalists know what the answer is going to be to the question. They still ask it because, hey, you know, it's an article I can write that'll be in Bloomberg or in CNBC or in Coindesk or you know, Wall Street Journal or whatever that says, hey, Warren Buffett says this thing about something that's hot that other people are passionate about. So we're going to go into that. Also too, you have to come and respect in some ways where Warren Buffett is coming from and what he invests in, things that he can clearly assign value to, dividend paying you know, equities, things like that. Bitcoin doesn't necessarily pay a dividend. It is speculative in nature. There are a lot of components to Bitcoin that Warren Buffett wouldn't like, doesn't like, and it is what it is. But the fact that people keep asking about him is somewhat frustrating. Also too though, like if we're looking at Warren Buffett and Charlie Munger, are we really respecting, or are we really expecting, let's say 80 plus, 90 plus year old white dudes who probably don't know how to use a laptop efficiently to understand the value proposition of digital assets? just might not be in the wheelhouse. Like if, if we can sit back and admit that, hey, maybe these dudes just aren't the target audience right now and they're part of a bygone error and there is an error that is coming out and we can obviously see with the market capitalization of Bitcoin and of other crypto assets that there is a demand for these assets and there is actual interest in the digitization of finance. So that's my point. So getting away from the conversation of older dudes that don't like Bitcoin or cryptocurrency, here is something that I think is definitely being discussed, but perhaps not being discussed enough. And that is Fidelity offering cryptocurrency trading within a few weeks. For those who are not familiar, we've talked about Fidelity before on the channel. Fidelity is one of the larger names in the traditional finance world. They have over a trillion dollars in assets under management. For context, even at its peak, at its absolute, absolute peak in the bull run, the cryptocurrency market was about $800 billion, was never even close to the assets under management that Fidelity has. Now, this is something that I think is really important because it provides an on-ramp, not necessarily for retail traders, people like you and me, but for institutional players that are interested in trading crypto assets, investing in crypto assets, specifically Bitcoin in this scenario, perhaps others in the future, but really focusing right now on Bitcoin. But when you do look and you think about it, it doesn't necessarily just affect Bitcoin. If this is a positive situation for Bitcoin, a lot of times that will flow into other cryptocurrencies as well, whether it's Bitcoin lifting the entire market or institutional players putting money into Bitcoin and perhaps retail kind of exiting that into altcoins. You don't really know until it happens, but 
long story short this is a very positive development for infrastructure development in the cryptocurrency space when the entire market ran in 2017 early 2018 there was definitely no legitimate like real real legitimate on ramps for a lot of the institutional players if if and i'm saying if i'm not saying when but if we do see another big run not only do you have people like e-trade now that are coming online for retail investors you have better solutions with places like coinbase and gemini uh and robin hood and then you know binance and all these other exchanges out there everybody is just so much better positioned be it the tech customer support insurance whatever it might be to actually uphold a influx of potential customers or investors or whatever it might be so seeing this is a really positive development and if you don't think so you're a big dummy so that's just my mind and speaking of institutional adoption ether actually ran up eth ran up pretty nice against bitcoin today if we pull up the eth btc chart eth today is up about eight uh, percent close to eight percent against its bitcoin trading pair up about seven percent twelve dollars or so in usd value and a lot of that is on the back of this uh conversation a cftc insider said that regulators are ready to prove uh, regulators are ready to approve ethereum futures and said the cftc is willing to let an ether futures contract go to market after soliciting market feedback in the last year uh, and then coindesk goes on to say a futures contract might bring fresh institutional funding to the crypto space and also lead to retail investors looking into cryptocurrency one thing that i will say and will point to however though is this is definitely good news as well i think the more in my mind the more investing products in the cryptocurrency space the better whether or not it is a, a fully bullish thing for for everybody it's not always a lot of people look to bitcoin futures as something that the the hype about bitcoin futures really caused a lot of the run-up in 2017 for Bitcoin to get all the way up to $19,000. And basically on the, basically the top of the cryptocurrency market, the top of the Bitcoin market was when Bitcoin futures went live and then the markets, Bitcoin specifically, and then a lot of the other markets kind of plummeted after that. So one might look at this and say, okay, you know, maybe this is bullish in the short to near term for Ether because you have the hype or the potential hype over ETH futures with the cftc but is that actually bullish once it goes live things don't exactly play out the the same the second time around they probably won't play out the exact same time for bitcoin to ether but overall again the more institutional grade investment products the better it just goes to show the legitimization of the cryptocurrency space as a whole and i'm happy about that so we've gone from news that I think is very expected where you have some old dudes that don't like cryptocurrency to news that is what I think is pretty fantastic with Fidelity getting into the Bitcoin trading space and the potential for Ether futures, according to a CFTC insider source. Now you have something that I really have no clue what's going to happen with. I have not a damn clue. And my expertise in this situation really comes down to the fact that about you know 10 plus years ago, I took a pre-law class my freshman year in uh, business school. So I would say I am you know about as good as any other lawyer out there. Uh, I I have full full knowledge of the situation and I'm I'm solid on it. So <laughs> there's two things here. Number one, we have Bitfinex and Tether, who have gotten in trouble with the New York Attorney General and that has led them to as of the time of recording this video they're right now in court in new york and my buddy zach vol is actually in the courthouse i believe with Catherine wu it is an open court so just stroll right on in and they went to the hearing right now they've been there for the past two three hours i believe i'm talking to zach a little bit to hear kind of his thoughts on it so no kind of full statements right now as of the time of recording this but this is really interesting because what is happening right now is you're seeing whether or not the New York Attorney General can continue to go after their injunction and investigation against Bitfinex and Tether. And they have to go ahead or, and what they're doing today is, is trying to prove to the New York Supreme Court that they are able to do so. And Bitfinex has, says, you know, has said, no, uh, we don't think you are, should be able to do so. So there's an ex parte order. 
And that's where we're at right now. But as all this is happening, as all this legal uncertainty is happening with the New York Attorney General, you have Bifinex saying, you know what? We don't really give a shit about what's happening with the court system in New York. We're $850 million in the hole right now because that money has been seized from crypto capital. And guess what we're going to do? Because we're $850 million in the hole or about that, let's say roughly what's a few million dollars between friends. We're going to do a token sale and not just any token sale. We're going to do what's hot on these internet streets and we are going to raise an IEO and it's going to be for about a billion dollars. And we're going to do basically something very similar to what Binance has done. And this has been fascinating to watch because there are people that hate, hate, hate Bitfinex. And there are people that are willing to throw a bunch of money at Bitfinex for this token sale. I mean, a billion dollars is about as big of a token sale as we've seen from almost anybody. I mean, outside of EOS and maybe a few others, that is a massive, massive token sale. Granted, it is already a, a big business and what some potentially might consider to be a profitable business. I haven't seen the entire financials. I don't know how profitable they are on a continuous basis. I don't know where their money is held up. There's a lot of uncertainty around Bitfinex, but there are people that are willing to throw a bunch of money at Bitfinex. And Tom Lee, aka Funstrat on Twitter, I'm sure a lot of you guys follow him or see him on CNBC occasionally, tweeted this out. Hearing the Bitfinex LEO is oversubscribed, meaning that there are more people that want to invest in it than there are investable assets to be had. Again, affirming our sense that the Bit or that Bitfinex has earned the trust of its customers and clients generally speaks well of them. One notable comment here, Jesse Powell, who is the CEO of Kraken, actually responded to that tweet and said, I find this hard to believe given the risks and versus the upside potential of this asset versus the opportunity cost and performance of lending markets and recent financing attempts. We'll see when it comes time for people to commit. So... Interesting hearing that Bitfinex apparently has a significant amount of interest in their token sale to the point where there are apparently over a billion dollars worth of investment commitments to their token sale of people that want to invest. Now, for me personally, uh, I wouldn't give Bitfinex a dime. I am not able to. I certainly couldn't meet the million dollar threshold, the minimum uh, of a million dollars to invest in Bitfinex. But if it were me, I wouldn't touch a Bitfinex token with a 10-foot pole. Um, I am not necessarily a massive fan of, of kind of the, the, the transparency of, of the company and certain other elements of it. On the other end of the spectrum, though, if Bitfinex is able to pull off their IEO raise and go about their merry way with a replenished bank account and essentially getting that 800 plus million dollars back that they have seized from or that has been seized from crypto capital that is no longer available to them they're able to restock their coffers and get back to business as usual or kind of as as close to usual as possible that's probably a pretty bullish thing for the market in combination with what ends up happening with this Bitfinex hearing in New York I will definitely keep you updated as soon as I hear anything about what ends up going on with the court in New York and Bitfinex and the New York Attorney General's office probably something you don't care that much about however you might see a direct impact on the price of Bitcoin and other crypto assets if things go haywire per se so certainly something I'm keeping an eye on something that I think is worth at least listening to other opinions on there as well uh, I personally am, am hoping for a positive resolution. I am, again, not a big fan of Bitfinex and just the level of transparency that they bring to the cryptocurrency markets. I also don't feel like having Bitfinex crash my crypto bags down to the gutter again. So we'll end up see how that, we'll, we'll see how it plays out. Now, outside of that, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video and podcast. If you did, make sure to hit that thumbs up button. Hit that like button if you enjoyed the video. And if you're listening on Apple, Spotify, or Google Play, wherever that might be, make sure to leave a rating and a review. Thank you so much for your time. Crypto Bobby signing out. Hope you have a good one. Peace.